Welcome to 60 Matthews. I'm Matthew, and this is my van, Sheila. Come on inside. So, as soon as you walk in, you've got the Abbey Road blanket and the Star Wars pillow over there. You've got some nice green foliage around here. Then right over here, you have the general trash can area, and then I have um, some stuff for Jackson and some little hand weights. I'm a climber, so that helps to help my grip. I've got a spot for my shoes here, and then up under here I have most of my storage for the place. I've got various kind of electronics up under here, fans and wires and things. Then up over here I've got books and things, and then down there I've got, let's see what we have. Down here I've got DVDs, South Park, Boston Legal, Community, Buddhism stuff, all of that. Up under here I've got all of my kitchen gear. Um, I've got some bowls, some Tupperware, some glass jars, some pots and pans and strainers, and I've got my pasta maker, um, which is kind of essential for me. I like to make fresh pasta. And then over here, I've got the other kind of side of the kitchen. I've got all of my utensils, matches, um, big utensils, cheese grater. Um, ooh, don't fall on me. Got some fresh chopsticks. And under here, I've got my fuel for my um, ovens. Um, this is for my alcohol stove, and then this is for my just regular one burner. I've got all of my tea and coffee stuff up, up under here. I've got a coffee grinder, teapots, my mocha pot, and then um, some tea back there. Then I've got the alcohol stove right here, so anytime I want to cook um, the mocha pot, I just take this off, fill that with the alcohol stove, fill that with the alcohol out of here, and then since this is a too small of a uh, surface, I've built the system where I put a little thing like that and then this sits perfectly on top just like that so then this burns and I make my pocket my mocha and all of that so that's how this system works all of that fits nicely into its places and then up under here I've got some dishes some mugs some cups um, a big knife and some plates my kitchen is kind of split up between this little drawer and then this, the set of drawers because I wanted to, my main kitchen cooking area is back there, but I at least wanted to be able to cook out the front. Also, when this bed is pulled out, it kind of blocks off this drawer area right here. So I wanted to be able to still access a lot of my coffee and tea stuff in the morning without having to put that up. If I'm cooking bigger meals and need all that stuff in the in this container down here, I the the bed would be pushed up anyway, so it would be easier to access. So this is the general bed area. I've got plenty of space for myself and one other person. I've had it before where I've been sitting here and somebody else has been sitting right over here and it works perfectly. I've got plenty of space to work right here. I can always sit back here, put my legs up, watch some TV. Then this, this over here is my desk space. So I've got this little area. I've got a good amount of a laptop area and then have a little bit of a green area to just make it feel a little bit more homey. Since I'm a writer, sometimes I need my laptop and my notebook and my coffee and all the things, so I, I like to have a nice big workspace. Up under here I've got pens and pencils and things. I've got my eye glasses case and my um, contact stuff. Over here I've got different notebook pieces and paper and stuff that I sketch on and that just kind of collects everything. Uh, up under here I've got various cords and bricks, like the USB bricks and everything. And then I fit quite nicely into here. Even whenever the bed is pulled out, I can still fit quite, ni quite nicely up under there. Up over here, I've got all of the books that I'm reading, or the DVDs that I'm watching. And then up under here, I've got uh, some cutting boards, some aluminum foil, and all that. 
And then up over here, I've got the beginnings of my closet. I can hang up some jeans and some um, kind of nicer shirts that I don't want to be wrinkled. And um, up over here is where all of my dirty laundry goes. <clears throat> so I just kind of stuff it down there and it hides everything. So yeah, this goes all the way down to the bottom. So one of the requirements for moving into the van was that I wanted to be able to cook indoors and outdoors. Like I said, whenever I'm in the morning, whenever I get up in the morning, I wanted to be able to cook either on this surface right here or um, whenever I cook bigger meals, I can have the kitchen counter back here. But um, if I'm if it's like raining or if it's cold outside and I need to wash dishes, then I can always do that. So my dry dish is here and I don't have to go outside at all. Even though this lifts up and is a nice kind of spot to um, it's cool that I can stay dry even whenever it's drizzling outside. If it is pouring outside, then I'm just kind of stuck in the van and I didn't want to be stuck completely. I wanted everything to be available to me on the inside. So my sink system is this little uh, two gallon pump tank down here. So I just pump it up and then spray it and some stuff. Yeah, water comes out. Now moving on to the outside kitchen area. This has a little flip up here and then that has a, this can connect right there. So this is a pretty stable surface. So this just pulls out. I can take this out and then cook. Take this out and set it on top and cook that way. Um, also, if I'm like chopping vegetables and stuff, I could do it right here and then have plenty of workable kitchen space up here. Up under here, I've got my Dometic fridge that's got quite a bit of space um, and it works fantastic. Um, up over here, I've got some space for my olive oil and vinegar, and this used to have some stuff, but the pocket fell off, so now it doesn't. Um, there's a couple of hooks for my um, kitchen mitts. I've got a, I've got my colander, some utensils hanging up here. I've got a place, uh, whatever I put my hot pans on, whatever that's called. Um, back here, I've got some food storage. I've got some rice and quinoa and all of that. Got some cereal and some oats for oatmeal. I've got some uh, jam hiding back there. Um, I can access it on the side or up back um, or over here on the, on the side, so it's quite versatile. Up over here, I've got my spices. I've got some cloves, some cardamom, some other things back there. Um, so that's where I keep all of that. So onto the sink, the way it works, um, this little dish bin comes out so that I can dry some stuff over here. This sink will drain all the way down to here. So now onto the battery system. It's two six volt batteries up under there, one and two. They are built in series, I believe, maybe. Um, basically, six volt and six volt make 12 volt. And since there's two of them, I get twice the amount of amp hours out of them. So each one is 220 amp hours, and so I get 440 total amp hours of it, out of it, which is just plenty. This right here is a battery isolator, so whenever the van alternator is done charging the the van's battery, it then comes on to this clicks on, and then this charges these batteries right here. Alternatively, I have two, these two are going to two solar panels up front. They come to this uh, charge controller and then they charge this. So these two batteries get charged by the battery isolator and then these two solar panels up front. And then they go through these two lines up to here. So I've got two 12 volt, just regular cigarette lighter ports right here. And then on this side, I've got two sets of USB ports. So there's two ports here and then two ports here for a total of four USB ports and two 12 volt ports. And then there's a direct port going from here all the way to the Dometic fridge over here. So that's kind of hardwired into the batteries and then these are hardwired up to here which is really all I need. I can convert, I can plug a converter up to here anytime I need to use that much energy, but for the most part, I just have 12 volt appliances and everything now is run by USB. So that's all of the real energy that I need. So full disclosure, Sheila hasn't been running um, in a little while. The engine um, was basically collecting carbon and clogging up the engine and so I couldn't uh, it, there were ways that I could fix it, but um, I was able to park it in this lovely spot right here 
and kind of transition into a different thing. I still live in it pretty much full time, so it's still lucky for me works as a house. It's just not quite as mobile anymore. But since the battery isolator in the back uh, runs off of the engine and the engine isn't running anymore, I now have these solar panels right over here. So this is the Renogy solar system and these work awesome. They're great. Right over here I have the Harbor Freight system as a backup just in case something goes wrong with this or in case we have kind of cloudy days like we've had today. So um, I'm able to keep a plenty of battery power, or if something's just wrong with one of the systems, then I can always rely on the other battery. So because of that, it's allowed me to use, <laughs> utilize all of my front seat. So this is currently my laundry system. I'm just okay with being wrinkly sometimes. Everything's clean, so that's all that matters. I've just got some hiking shoes, I've got my jacket, my North Face jacket has been fantastic for helping me get through the winter months in the van. And then up under here I have some uh, kind of nicer stuff and some off-season stuff, some sweaters and stuff like that. But this North Face jacket has been a savior. <laughs> Let me come up over here. So back on the inside, I have kind of my living area, my living room space right here. I have a nice view right out front. And then this is kind of just where I can sit back and relax and have coffee in the morning or uh, read a book or whatever. Since I'm not moving anymore, I've been able to take this passenger seat out and have all of this space right over here. This is more of my like meditation space. I have an altar and everything back behind me, which I'll show you now. So back behind here, I have my um, a good amount of, of space to, to store some stuff. I've got my altar, uh, my little candles and stuff right here. I've got a 12 volt cooker, which is basically just like a warmer. Um, I've got a vacuum and a uh, citronella candle, an inverter, and yeah, a surprising amount of storage that I can fit back there. I just pull the altar out out of there, put it here, and sit on that. Um, I've got a little meditation pillow that I can use and sit here and have my prayer flags and, and start my day that way. Okay, so this is the fairly simplistic way of pulling out the bed. So I've got, it's made with these teeth. You can't see that. So it's made with these teeth so that this pulls out. Then it just has three supports that stick up under it. So all you need to do is pull this out One, and two, and the other support is right here, and three, and that's it. This pulls out like this, and ah, now I'm in bed. So how I got into van life was a bit of a rabbit hole. Whenever I was a kid, for a brief period of time, I wanted to be an architect. Something about the layout of floor plans interested me as a little kid. I don't know why. Even as a kid, I was building little tiny cardboard cutouts um, and putting little like dishes and, and little beds and I don't know why. That was, that was fun for me, but it was fun to create for one reason or another. So I wanted to go into architecture, but the more I started looking into it, the more there was all of the science, all of this, there was a lot of structure, there was a lot of code, there was a lot of, it was just a very difficult, difficult field to get into. And also there wasn't this, I mean, there was this grand kind of romantic idea of being able to just create this massive, awesome building or this, this really pretty thing. And somebody would look at it and say, yes, I want that. And I'll pay you $8 million for it. But really, that's not the case. It's really the all an architect does is kind of put into make a visual representation of numbers and requirements from clients, um, which can be its own artistic, creative uh, challenge in and of itself. And that's awesome. But for me, that's not what I really wanted to do. 
so I gave up architecture and really pursued theater and acting as a as a as my main passion but I still had a knack for designing things even if it wasn't houses or apartments or anything I still loved like working on layouts of stuff and designing different things so slowly I found out about the tiny house uh it's about small homes really it was an article in a local newspaper about small houses and not tiny houses that would come later on in my life but small houses and whenever I saw it it was basically like a studio apartment but in like house form and it was larger than that and it still had like one bedroom and, and um, kitchen but it had like a main great room and seeing the layout of that and after having moved several times in my life I just really gravitated towards the idea of just having less stuff Although minimalism wasn't really in my mind at that point, it was mainly just realizing that I could have everything within that, uh, within this one space. So it got me down the rabbit hole of designing smaller and smaller houses. But I had this idea of, okay, well, if I had a tiny house, it would need to be like the big 20 foot, like gigantic things. And so I would design this big grand thing and, and I started to look at houses and trailers as almost like a challenge. It became a kind of puzzle to me of fitting together like the bathroom and the kitchen and, and the bedroom and the closet and all of these little things and squeezing out the little, uh, the negative space, all of the dead space and just seeing how, just how small I could get it. So I went through shipping container homes. I went through underground dome houses. I went through a lot of trailer houses just kind of seeing different spaces that I could put it in. So that's how I stumbled upon van life. Through my YouTube travels, I obviously van life popped up a lot. And whenever I first started looking at it, I thought, oh, well, that's an interesting, that would be an interesting challenge. Like, how could I fit everything into this very, very small space? But originally, it was just this hypothetical, like, the ultimate challenge of how do you fit an entire house into this very limited space? So again, I started out with, like, I'm going to need a big, like, cargo van or, like, a big sprinter van and be able to fit everything in there. But I basically saw an idea of a minivan that was very similar to this, where the closet was on the closet was kind of over here. It had a little bit of a kitchen space back here, and then it had the little like, desk area right here. And, like he sorted everything completely differently, but the idea of bed on one side, desk on the other side, and then kitchen in the back was just fascinating. I saw that and thought, that's perfect. So I instantly went to go to start designing that and this hypothetical, oh, that would be a fun challenge, all of a sudden turned into, this is genius and this is what I wanna do. I had designed so many tiny houses and I really had so many plans of what I wanted to do. I wanted an underground house. I wanted a, a house on a trailer. I wanted a shipping container house. I, I wanted to do all of these different things and I didn't know which one I wanted to invest in because tiny houses, one of the benefits is that there's less of an investment, but there's still a large amount of money that you have to put forth. I didn't want to build something and after two years into the process realize, oh man, I really should have done this instead. And I was still living in a house. I had no idea if I would even enjoy going tiny. So whenever I saw the minivan, it all just kind of clicked together for me where I knew it was temporary. I knew that it was this kind of carryover into this bigger project. I was able to fit really everything. I have a massive, pretty decent sized kitchen. I have a really big desk. I'm able to fit pretty much everything I need. So yeah, it went from this hypothetical thing to something I ended up um, embarking on. So I just kind of fell into van life and I fell into minimalism as well. I've been growing steadily more and more eco-conscious where I didn't want to... I mean, I knew that trash was building up in the world. I knew that electricity required a lot of, of energy. Whenever I bought this van, I was living in a two-bedroom house that whenever I first looked at it, I went, oh, this is actually pretty small. But after living in it for three years, I realized this is a large house. This is, I mean, to most people, it would still be a small house, but I basically lived within my bedroom. I loved my kitchen. It was a really, really nice kitchen, and it was a really nice house. It had a little extra room that I made my meditation spot where I had my altar and my tapestry on the wall and I had my just kind of a little bit of storage and I had just like a nice little space. But for the most part, 
I was heating and cooling the rest of the house while I was sitting on my bed doing most of my work 90% of the time. I would go to the kitchen and cook a lot, and so I did utilize that area too. But whenever I was in the kitchen working, I was still heating and cooling 80% of the house that I wasn't using at the time. I was in the kitchen, and I didn't need the bedroom and bathroom and all of the rest of the space heated and cooled. The only reason why I needed that was so that whenever I walked in there, it would be more comfortable. And not to say that that's a bad thing, but looking at using energy and also being pretty poor throughout my life, I was just more conscious of all of the things that I, all of the resources that I was using up and all of the money that I was wasting. So that was one of the main appeals of van life was that it was all the rooms I needed and I could just convert to whatever room I was in at the time. If I wanted to cook, I was all of a sudden in my kitchen. If I wanted to go to sleep, I was all of a sudden in my bedroom. If I wanted to work on stuff, I was automatically in my office. It's actually kind of nice to be like working on stuff and if I needed a cup of coffee, I could just reach over and start, pull out my uh, alcohol container, pull out my mocha pot, pull out my grinder and start working on coffee. It makes my breaks a lot more efficient and I just got more into efficient things. Whenever I first moved into the van, I got the question a lot of, but where do you actually live though? Like you stay in your van, but where do you, where do you live? And... It was difficult to explain to people to, I mean, it was easy to explain, but it was difficult to get into people's heads that I live in my van, but I live kind of wherever I am at the time. A lot of people see this and say, oh, I could never live there, but that's because they live the majority of their lives in their house. Whenever I was in my house, I knew that the outside existed, but out my windows, it just kind of looked like, like television. It just kind of looked like, this this world out there that was on that was like pressing play i just felt separated from the world outside where theoretically logically i knew that there was a world outside but my my understanding was everything that was inside i just felt like i was in this little dome bubble that i would have to break out of if i opened the door whereas with my van i sleep here i cook here i work here but that means that I can really live at a coffee shop or I can live at a park or I can go to anywhere I want and that's really where I'm living at the time. I, you know, it, it makes me live a lot more outside and being able to just open my front door and be outside was really magical. It was a really difficult thing for me to grasp. Whenever you're sleeping in your vehicle, it feels a lot like you're sleeping outside, like you're camping. And that's not too far from the truth, but slowly it starts to feel actually like home. So it feels a lot homier than, than you would expect. I strongly recommend to anyone who's wanting to reduce or wanting to go on a fun adventure, I strongly recommend to anyone who's even thinking about possibly doing it, you don't need this great setup of a couch that like folds, that pulls out to be a bed or a kitchen that like fits perfectly with everything, that every, all the pieces like fit together perfectly. Just throw some clothes and some extra mattress pads in a car or in your van or something and just go out and see it. It's a lot less scary than you think it is. Thank you for checking out my tiny house, Sheila. I love her. I've never regretted for a second converting to the van life. I love it more than I ever thought I would. And obviously I'm not going to live in a van for the rest of my life, but for the time being, I'm very content.